it's time for a feast and a show. Canterbury Feast is back in action despite being canceled last year due to COVID-19. And this year it's celebrating a major milestone. Fontaine Glenn's live at the Station Dinner Theater with more on this event. Good morning, Fontaine. Good morning to you, Dave. Yes, this is the 40th year for a Canterbury Feast. And that's what, to talk more about that is owner Paul Urbanowitz. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Fontaine. Nice to have you here. Nice to be back here. And I know 40 years, is that's, that's a pretty big milestone. How does that feel to make it to 40 years? Uh, well, it's kind of unbelievable. I mean, I, I was in the first cast back in 1981 when we first started. So it, it just doesn't seem possible. Of course, we were supposed to uh, uh, celebrate last year, but uh, we're able to, to do it this year, which is great. A great feeling. And it's great that it can't be put on this year. Now, for viewers, many viewers do know what a Canterbury Feast is, but for those who don't, what is a Canterbury Feast? Well, the Canterbury Feast is a medieval-style musical comedy dinner theater, and uh, everything is done medieval-style. So uh, uh, this year, obviously, we've made a couple of adjustments and changes, but it's very safe. Our performers are uh, completely masked while they're you know, serving and everything, too. Uh, and our audience members can still enjoy, you know, the feast. Um, we serve uh, a uh, two and a quarter pound stuffed chicken, uh, which actually varies. Sometimes it's a little bit more. So uh, they get a two and a quarter pound stuffed chicken per person, uh, stone soup, which is a homemade beef and vegetable soup. Uh, we change the, uh, the bread to smaller loaves that are individualized. Uh, and we have uh, zupa and glaze for dessert, which is uh, with sliced, sliced apples and sliced cheese. Awesome. That sounds all delicious, even though it is six in the morning. <laughs> exactly. Well, we'll 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 kind of uh, have a taste of that in the second segment here. That sounds great to me. But I know this is something that's very different. There's nothing else around. So, what attracts the community to a Canterbury feast? Uh, well, it probably attracts more the non-theater goers at times too, but uh, definitely the theater goers as well. Uh, the participation that's involved with the show, we have drinking songs uh, both at the beginning and the end of the, of, the, uh, of the show. Plus, we do a different show every year. This year was written by David Durst, and it was cleverly incorporated at all 40 years in some way into the show itself. And the audiences have been really loving it. We did a preview run back in September just to kind of, uh, you know, get our feet wet a little bit. And tonight we open with our uh, our 40th anniversary of the Canterbury Feast. That's super exciting. Don't go anywhere. Just like Paul said, we will be maybe getting a little taste test of the feast. And I'm no, I'm no stranger to food, so I'm really excited for this. But for now, Dave, back to you. Oh, I'm envious. Fontaine, you lucky girl, getting to test out that Canterbury feast. It's delicious. Eleven.